I'm really excited to bring this one to you. But uh, let me give you a little background. When we were young, my brother and I, a uh, Christmas stocking stuffer that we always got was the Brock's chocolate covered cherries. And that would be back in the late 60s, early 70s. So I would, I'm thinking that there were like 24 of those cherries, chocolate covered cherries in a box. And nowadays, this one, my brother bought me these today for old time's sake, and it's got 10 pieces, so that's probably five per layer. And back in the, back in the good old days, I think it was 12 per layer. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it was that many. But it was something we always looked forward to, and I really loved those chocolate-covered cherries. And thinking on my next pie that I could make, I thought, wouldn't it be neat for Christmas to be able to make a chocolate-covered cherry pie with maraschino-type cherries? And wouldn't you know it, John and Bibbs, I don't give up. It took me a lot of... Uh, different tries of different ways of going about it but I think I found well I know I found the trick because I've already made a test pie and eaten half of it so tonight we are going to make a chocolate covered maraschino cherry pie and what we're going to do is we're going to make a fresh pie and then I'm also going to if I have any left over from the pie which I should do I'm going to make some squares and then we'll freeze dry the squares. So that'll be the freeze drying part of it. Okay. But there's two key ingredients that I found. Believe me, it was through a lot of testing. You need a good cher maraschino cherry syrup. And I tried several different brands. But I was reading the reviews on this Reese's Reese maraschino syrup. And everybody said that that was really good on Amazon. A really true, strong flavor. And they weren't lying. So, if you're going to make this pie, I highly recommend that you use this syrup. Actually, the other syrups I did, I wouldn't bother making them because the, the flavoring is just not there. You really need this syrup. On Amazon, I think they're about $7 a bottle. But it's worth every single penny and the other thing that we I highly recommend and that is the Dutch processed Gerard Dali Dutch processed cocoa I've tried other cocos and the, the Gerard Dali's is just the best cocoa there is and it gives you a really rich dark chocolate perfect for this pie so, with those two items, we are going to make one of the best pies I've ever made. Certainly the best pie I've ever invented, because this is a totally original recipe. So, without any further ado, as they say, let's get started. So, this is a two-part process. First, we're going to make the cherry part. And we need three cups of milk. And I'm using 2% milk. And it comes out creamy. Next we are going to add three tablespoons of sugar. Just plain old granulated sugar. One, two, three. Now, when I was make, made this and going through my trials and errors, I got the flavor down first, but it just was too rubbery. It needed a texture. And I was in my local price chopper and trying to figure out something to use in it, and I was down the pudding aisle, and I saw this. Tapioca. Minute Instant Tapioca. And this is what makes the pie. We need three tablespoons of that. And last but not least, my agar agar powder. You guys know I'm a big fan of this stuff. And I'm really happy with this 
who who's your hill farm because it's a bulk pack so I'm not opening those little packets and it's actually a little bit cheaper and it really works fantastic linked in my Amazon store which is in a, a link to that is in the description we need to add one and a half teaspoons of powder agar powder now what we need to do with this let me bring this into camera view what we need to do with this is we need to stir that up and both the tapioca and the agar agar need to soak in this liquid for five minutes so once I get this mixed up we'll start counting five minutes and that's a critical critical stage for both the tapioca and the agar agar powder to let it soak up if you don't it's going to be grainy gritty and just not very pleasant so we'll let that soak for five minutes and I'll see you in five minutes okay that has been sitting five minutes and just absorbing that moisture from the milk so now we need to bring it to a full boil so I want to put this on medium-high or high just 425 and press start now you have to stir this constantly not stopping at all because it will stick and burn to the bottom and we don't and create lumps we don't want that so we'll bring it to a full boil that is that it is boiling even while I'm stirring the stir doesn't take away the boil okay I don't know if you can see that but it is I'm stirring it and it's still boiling bubbles are still coming up so that is going to be good so let's turn this off and I'm going to continue stirring that for a minute Okay, now we put our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Reese Maraschino syrup in. Three quarters of a cup. Which is quite a bit of the bottle, but it's worth it. We'll just stir that in. Look at that turning beautiful red. Okay, looking good. Let me put this off to the side a little bit. I got a Oreo graham cracker or Oreo crust pie crust. And what we're going to do is we are going to fill that at least two-thirds of the way full. We want to leave enough room for a thin layer of chocolate on the top. And that looks good. So we're going to set that off to the side 
and let that cool. That was set because of that agar agar at room temperature. So let's make up some squares. Again, on the squares, I'm going to fill them about two thirds full. Okay, so we're going to let that set. I'm going to go clean up all this mess, and I'll be back to show you the chocolate. Okay, I've let that sit about 20 minutes, and that has set to where I feel comfortable taking that over to the fridge and putting it in the refrigerator while we make the next layer. Okay, for this one, the chocolate, we need two cups of milk. Four tablespoons of this Dutch process cocoa powder. One, four. Four tablespoons of sugar. tablespoons of tapioca and one teaspoon of the agar agar powder okay let's get that mixed up we need to mix this and that's a good thing about this Dutch process Cocoa is it will mix with cold milk. Actually, what I'm going to do, which is what I did last time, I should have just planned on doing it this time, is I got my little mixer and went like we used it. Get that off the sides. We don't want no grit or lumpiness in our chocolate either. Long time ago, one of my viewers, and I'm sorry I don't remember who you were, are, but you recommended me getting one of these immersion blenders, and <laughs> it's a game changer for me, so thank you for that. All right, so that's all mixed up. Once again, we need to let that sit for five minutes so the tapioca and the agar agar can soak up and moisturize and do the stuff it's got to do. So don't skimp on that. Five minutes for sure. Minimum five minutes. I'll see you in five minutes. Okay, we've waited our five minutes. A little stir before I turn it on. Once again, we'll put it on high. And we're going to stir this constantly until it comes to a full boil. That is a boil that doesn't go away with stirring. Okay, it is now boiling. And me stirring doesn't take the boil away. It's still boiling. So we're going to call that good. I'm going to continue stirring that for just a second or two. Let's get our pie shell over. And now we're going to pour it on the top.
there you have it. Little shake. Let's put that off to the side. Let's do these. All right, there you have it. So you can see I have plenty left over. So I think if you made your own Oreo crack rim, Oreo cookie crust in a nine inch pan, there should be enough in this recipe to make a full nine inch size pie. I'm just being lazy. I think you'll also agree that it's very easy just follow the directions step by step and you can't go wrong so what we're going to do is we're going to let these cool down and set up I'll take these I'll freeze them in my freezer and then pop them out of the molds and put them into the freeze dryer tray we'll stick them in the freeze dryer and freeze dry these and the pie once it's ready we will do a beautiful taste test on that and you won't be disappointed. So, we'll see you for the taste test and the freeze dry. Okay, so we set that pie in the refrigerator, let it chill overnight. And before I move on, I want to let you know that uh, I went on Amazon just to verify that I could, you could still get this, and it is sold out by all the sellers on Amazon. But the good news is, I went on to Reese website which I'll put a link to in the description and you can find a local store hopefully that sells it I found one my local price shopper would you know it I, I shop there and I've never seen it sells it and the good news is that it's half the price of what I paid on uh, Amazon it's three dollars and twenty nine cents for a bottle and I think I paid seven dollars <laughs> a bottle on Amazon so it's definitely worth looking into your uh, using their little store finder and uh, just make sure you tick the uh, syrup because they got a lot of products they sell they make and just make sure you tick the uh, Reese Maraschino syrup and put in your address details and it'll tell you where you can find it locally and you'll save a lot of money but it's definitely worth the money so with that being said, I just wanted to let you guys know about that. We've let this cool overnight. You can eat this at room temperature, but it's much, much more pleasant if you could let that chill for two hours and get it nice and cold. So let's do a taste test. I'm going to have a nice big piece. Make sure I've gone through all the crust on that. finished yet all right put this to the side we've got to put the finishing touches on this which happens to be a little dollop of whipped cream or cool whip and what I did is I took the remainder of that uh, syrup that was in the bottle and I put it in the squeezy bottle. We're just going to drizzle some, oh, get that little cap out of the way. Let's 
syrup on that. And top it with a cherry. And let's take a close up of that. That looks delicious. So let's dig in. I want you to see how well that just cuts. Check that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. The first bite that you get into that, you instantly taste that cherry. Then the chocolate which is kind of like a bittersweet chocolate dark chocolate like the just the way I like it oh my gosh it's so good I'm gonna save that cherry for last this is just it's exotic. It's creamy. And I don't know if you saw my, if seen my video of the no baked pumpkin pie, which comes out just like a baked pumpkin pie. But the filling on this has the same texture, which is what I was looking for. A creamy, almost custardy texture. Obviously, not a custardy flavor, because this is a maraschino cherry chocolate flavor that you can't beat. And all it took to make that texture change with just a little bit of tapioca oh yes so good it's really quite easy to make really Time-consuming parts are uh, waiting five minutes while it soaks, and then bringing it up to a boil. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. That Oreo cookie crust just sets it off. And it wraps that cherry in chocolate just like the chocolate covered cherry candies. I'll let you guys have one more bite. There you go. Enjoy. Maraschino chocolate covered cherry pie. Oh my gosh, this is a taste of heaven. I think this is definitely going to be one of my new holiday pies that I'm going to make every year.
top it off. We're going to finish it off by eating that cherry. That was absolutely delicious. All right. So now that we've done that taste test of the pie, I'm going to put this in the video after we freeze dry the squares. That way we can taste test the squares directly after this. So if you're watching the video, I will see you for the taste test of the freeze dried squares. And here we have it. Chocolate covered maraschino cherry squares freeze dried. Now, I have no idea what these are going to taste like or the texture of these, but I'm looking forward to that. And I apologize, I was looking, doing the video editing and I've already gone almost 30 minutes, so I'm going to try and keep this under 30 minutes for the whole video. Let's taste one. That, my friends, is a fail on the freeze dry. It's almost chewy. Think tapioca. Freeze dry as well. It seems to have lost a lot of its flavor too. So anyway, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. It's a thumbs down. And I really want you to try that pie because that pie is, it's really, really good. It's a shame that it doesn't freeze dry well, but there you go. Can't have every, win everything. Well, I forgot, you know, maybe I cut this in real quick before, but I just wanted to say that with your leftover, if you make these squares, they taste really good fresh. So you have little bite-sized pieces of pie. So you don't have to freeze-dry them because they, they, they come out very nice freeze-dried. But you could always make use your leftover and make squares and then eat them as bite-sized treats. So I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you look out for my pie of the month for the month of January coming up January 1st. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.